All right, welcome back to my channel. I am dealing with a infestation right now. Um, my last video I did, I told you that I had just planted my seedlings, of my broccoli, cabbage, and some cauliflower, uh, and some spinach. Um, the very next day I come out to check them out and see if they're, you know, if they got shocked or anything, and I noticed some were missing. And I was like, okay, what's, what could have ate the plant? And I'm thinking, could it be rabbits? You know, a small rabbit or rabbits coming in here. But I got this uh, uh, poultry netting around here. I'm sure a rabbit could squeeze through there. It'd get shocked, but it would squeeze through. Um, then I thought maybe mice. But I've had mice before in here, and they make tunnels. Okay, I, I see no tunnels. Rabbits, they're heavy enough to, well, they'll leave, you know, their prints and stuff or some uh, disturbance in the soil anyways, especially in these beds. It's, it's, it's loose soil. So I planted, I replanted again, and uh, I had seedlings left over. But that's another thing I noticed. Now, I put the seedlings on the floor or on the, the, the floor of the greenhouse, and it, they weren't touched. You would think if a rabbit or a mouse come in here, they would eat those first because they don't have to jump up here to get them. So I replanted again, and the next day, again, a uh, few were missing. And I'm like, okay, something's coming in here at night and eating my seedlings. So at night, I come in here with my flashlight, didn't find no animals in here. And I started looking at the plants, the little seedlings, and I noticed there was those little roly-polies, okay, uh, running around everywhere. And I've seen them before. It's not a big deal. I thought I didn't think it was a big deal. And then I noticed one of the uh, seedlings was just fell over like that. And I looked right at the ground level where the stem comes out. There was two roly-polies there eating the stem and cutting it down and I thought to myself so that is what's eating my seedlings I never would have thought that so the very next day I come out again and that one particular plant that was it was already oh, about an inch and a half two inches tall and it had two leaves on it already it was completely completely eaten up they ate the whole thing up so once they cut that uh, seedling and it falls over then they all just eat it and completely just completely eliminate it now roly-polies is what we call them uh, they are a crustacean okay and like all crustaceans they eat dead decaying matter that's their main source of food and they need moisture okay so the beds are a perfect place for them they have really no predators other than lizards um, things like that maybe spiders but um, they need moisture and dead decaying organic matter, um, which the whole entire bed, the soil, is dead decaying organic matter. But when you get an infestation of them, they will also eat seedlings because the seedlings are very soft. They don't have that tough skin on them yet. Um, and they're, the seedlings are very vulnerable. So I, that's what I'm dealing with right now. Uh, I think I found a way, I did a lot of research, and I think I found a way to um, control them maybe. I don't know if I'll ever be able to get rid of them, but uh, I'm going to try to control them. So these two beds here are my Brunswick cabbage. This bed here, completely, they completely ate all my seedlings. Gone. Here I have uh, two, four, five, six seven but they're only like one leaf left on them um, my next one here is a different cabbage the um, late flat Dutch cabbage they ate a few of those also and at the very end my spinach my spinach here is completely devastated I had 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 I have roughly 50 plants in here I have now one two three three out of fifty and that's in two nights or maybe three nights I'm sorry 
Three knives completely took them out. And look how big they were. They're already getting pretty good size. And what they do is they they get down by the stem and they start chewing on it and chewing on it. And then the, the plant falls over or the leaf or the stem. And then they uh, devour it. Gone. Now, my bed of late flat Dutch is here and there. And I have a tray. I have enough to replant again. But you see they don't touch this because all the roly-polies are in the beds and I had here a bed of cauliflower and uh, last night I had one left right there and they completely devoured it so and I only have a, just a few left here uh, just little tiny ones all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm go I have a few plants I got enough just to replant this that's why I've told you in my past videos always overseed when you're making when you're getting ready to plant uh, in your garden or whatever always plant more seeds than you need you can always give them out to friends you can always make another area or whatever and plant them there but always plant more than you need a lot more <laughs> just for situations like this but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replant and then I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do to hopefully help prevent uh, them attacking the plants so I planted all my seedlings what we need to do now since they like moisture we need to water just around the plant and not around the rest of the bed okay um, at least for a while uh, because they like the moisture that's what they get attracted to is the moisture and organic dead organic material and the seedlings because they are very tender and soft and they can eat them okay so Got my water here, and we're just going to water just around the seedling, just like that. And I'm going to do the rest of them, and then I'll show you what we're going to do next. Alright, so after we water just around the seedlings, there's two things I'm going to do. There's other, so there's several things you can do actually. I'm gonna show you these two, what we're gonna do, and then I'll, I'll talk, talk about a couple other things. First here, we have a small plastic bag with cornmeal in there. Now, from all what I've read is the uh, roly-polies, they'll eat the uh, cornmeal, uh, they're attracted to it, and they can't digest it, and then they end up dying, which is so sad. But uh, unfortunately, that's the way it's going to end for these. <laughs> uh, next, what we can do. Now, I'm, I'm sure you can also put the cornmeal around the plants. As what I'm going to do next with this. This here is diatomaceous earth. Okay. Now, as you know, any bug that's got an exoskeleton. Uh, what diatomaceous earth is old fossilized um, one celled uh, seashells pretty much um, and they're very uh, rigid and, and they cut the uh, exoskeleton especially around the joints and stuff like that of these uh, bugs and it causes them to lose moisture and they end up dehydrating and dying which is again so sad <laughs> um, what we're gonna do is get some diatomaceous earth and we're gonna sprinkle it around the plant so as you know these roly-polies and don't breathe the dust by the way but it's not good if you inhale it and it goes, gets into your lungs um, so when these roly-polies crawl across that diatomaceous earth it's gonna get all on the underneath side of the uh, roly-polies or the bugs and it's gonna cut them up again so sad uh, but uh, that's just 
the game that they're going to want to play and uh, that's the game I'm going to play. Okay, so diatomaceous earth, cornmeal. Now there's a couple other things I heard you can do too. One is get some um, very crushed up garlic cloves, add some water to it. I guess let it stew for a little bit. <laughs> Don't cook it, I mean raw. So crush up some uh, uh, garlic cloves, put some water in there, and put it in a spray bottle. And you can spray these roly-polies, but I'm sure you'll have to do it at night because these things come out at night. So spray the whole area out. I guess it annoys the heck out of them, and uh, they don't like it, and they leave. We may also try that. Um, another thing, it's a trick. It's what, what you do is you get a, a cup or a, a can, a small can or a cup, and you bury it into the ground, and you leave the rim right at ground level, okay? Then you pour beer in there. I'm sure about three-quarters of the way up, or maybe half. And these roly-polies are attracted, I'm, I'm assuming they're attracted to that, that fermented, you know, alcohol smell, the sugary smell. And they go in there and they fall in there and they drown and they die again very sad <laughs> but uh that's supposed to work too i guess you can uh, keep the uh population down that way i may try that also just put a can here and maybe a, a can over there into the ground right at ground level so they crawl and they fall in and they can't get out those are the things we're going to try now we're going to try this first the cornmeal and the diatomaceous earth like this they're gonna crawl up over here they're gonna cake their bodies with it and they're gonna die um, and it'll keep them away from the plant um, that's why I say to just water in the middle and then put the um, diatomaceous earth on the outside because if you get the diatomaceous earth wet uh, it doesn't work that well okay it just turns into like a mud so we're going to try that out for the next night or two. I'm going to come out here again tonight and I'm going to see what's going on. Here I got ants in the bed also. See if I can get them to come out. Yeah, they're coming out here on the side. Here we are over here. So just put some diatomaceous earth in there. And that'll irritate them quite a bit. All right, it's getting later in the evening now. This is what we've done to the uh, seedling so far. I put a diatomaceous earth barrier or wall or moat <laughs> around each seedling. We got the cornmeal there going too. We could probably put more cornmeal bags there too. Um, well, this one's got two. But we got each bed, each seedling has a wall of diatomaceous earth. Now where my spinach was, um, I don't have any more spinach to plant. So I just sprinkled some diatomaceous earth on top, put some cornmeal there. Um, I did plant some seeds in here. So in the meantime, this should hold the uh, population down. Um, so maybe uh, once those seedlings come up, it won't be so bad. And over here also. So we're going to come out here tonight and see if uh, they are at it trying to kill my seedlings. Alright, now this is a bed that was very infested. Nothing there. Well, 
we have one roly-poly right there and I got another roly-poly over here but do I have any in my plants doesn't look like it oh yes I do shoot they're coming out from the ground you see that right there there's like uh, what is there three four of them look at that they're eating up my plants again okay we'll be here same thing they're eating up the plants again so you can see they're eating my plants so not working there's some here too they're coming up from the ground right here too yeah completely getting ate up you see that completely getting ate up right there Okay, and you can see that one right down by the stem is trying to eat that stem. Ooh, I got a, a whole infestation here. Yep. Here I got full of ants. And the ants are taking the cornmeal, but of course they're covered with the diatomaceous earth. Yep, completely covered, eating up the leaves. See how quick they're quickly? That was a whole leaf a little while ago. They're eating the leaf right up. The ones I just planted, as you saw, they were infested with them. So what I ended up doing is just covering the whole stem, everything, with diatomaceous earth. Now, it is watered, so um, the diatomaceous earth did get wet but I don't see any more coming back um, if this doesn't work then uh, I'm afraid that everything everything's gonna be a loss yeah if this doesn't work it's, <laughs> I'm just gonna lose everything because I can't put any chemicals in here and uh, well, there's one sucker right there But uh, yeah, I can't, uh, not much else I can do right now. Once they attach themselves to the plant, it's, that's it. If you don't find them, your plant's going to die. 
All right, it's the next morning. These beds were my premium crop, are uh, broccoli. Um, they really didn't have that a problem with the roly polies, but here they did, big time. And I can see right now, I lost this plant. That one's gone. That one's okay. This one here is half eaten. That one also half eaten. You can see here a lot of the leaves were eaten off. That one's gone. Again, this one here, half eaten. I can see a problem. They were coming out from under the, around here. They were coming up from under the ground. And of course the soil was still wet there. I ended up putting the diatomaceous earth right around the plant after I seen them eating my plants. Uh, but it looked like the diatomaceous earth absorbed the moisture and it did nothing to the uh, roly polies. Uh, that one there is pretty eaten up. This one got a leaf missing out of it too. This one here also. That one there also. Doesn't look good. Doesn't look good. Yeah, they ate that leaf off. But this bed is a little bit better. It looks like the cornmeal did nothing but feed the ants. That's about all it did. And this one doesn't look too bad. That one here, that they ate the leaf and part of the other leaf. Uh, same with that one there. They ate the leaf off of that one. All right, so uh, in conclusion, it looks like the, uh, the cornmeal did pretty much nothing uh, but feed the ants. Now again, the ants were walking on the diatomaceous earth, so the ones that did walk across it and brought the uh, cornmeal back to their nest, uh, hopefully those died during the night and it'll reduce their population. The uh, diatomaceous earth, it looks like it put a very small dent in the whole situation here. Uh, not much, but again, it's just the first night. They, uh, the bugs look like they were coming up from underneath on the inside of the ring of diatomaceous earth. Um, and that's when I noticed them last night. Um, and then I put diatomaceous earth on them directly immediately after that. And, um, it looks like it scattered them um, and hopefully those died so any uh, roly-poly that walks around and got the uh, diatomaceous earth on their underside most likely those died during the night you have to remember these things come out at night when it's dark in search of uh, their rotten decaying food <laughs> um, so they're always prowling around you know and walking so I sprinkle that stuff pretty much especially around my lettuce I just kind of sprinkle it everywhere uh, and on the beds where I haven't planted yet um, I sprinkle that pretty pretty good all around so as they're searching they're walking on this diatomaceous earth and eventually dying during the night so that will help reduce their population uh, this is not something this is not a quick fix thing this is a slow process and it's gonna take a little time uh, it could take I don't know I'm hoping few more days to a week and uh, really get this problem under control um, the, the mistake I did was I over watered um, I just planted my uh, lettuce in and I was watering like crazy um, my seedlings and all that stuff plus I watered more than I usually do because I have um, earthworms in each bed I put a handful of earthworms when I first put the beds in and uh, when I was working the soil just recently, I noticed there was a lot of uh, earthworms in here. And they need moisture too. So I was making sure the soil was moist. I might have obviously overdid it. The uh, roly polies took advantage of that situation. They like the moisture. They like the fact that it's all compost in here basically. And they have plenty to eat and a lot of moisture to survive. 
Um, so that's the key, people. Don't overwater. As long as your soil is on the moist side, don't add any more water. Um, and um, try and water right around the plant a little more than the other areas. Um, that's basically it. Just don't overwater. You know, just make sure put your finger in there. Make sure it's it's slightly moist, and you should be all right. Uh, so, guys, that's about it. I will keep you up to date what uh, what happens next in my, my next video or two. Um, if I got them under control or not, and how many uh, little seedlings I did lose. Uh, so, uh, yeah. All right, so guys, uh, I would appreciate it if you uh, like and subscribe to my videos. Um, just by hitting the uh, like button, it really tells YouTube to uh, promote the video so others can see it. That really helps out the channel, uh, gets me more views, and uh, helps out the channel quite a bit. All right, guys, so thank you for watching. Again, please like, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in my next video.